going on, everybody? It's Mr. Gustin. I'm not in the chemistry classroom today, but I wanted to take this chance to go ahead and talk about our titrations lab from last week. That's where we had the, the known concentration of base uh, in the burette. It looks something like this. We had a known base that was in this. Well, that marker doesn't work, does it? Let's find one that does. We had a burette, and the burette was the long, skinny tube that kind of came to a point at the end with some markings on it. And we had it filled with a known concentration of sodium hydroxide. That concentration, we put it in square brackets to say concentration, was equal to 0 0.15 molar. And we went ahead and we dropped it into an Erlenmeyer flask that had roughly, it was different for every trial, but it had roughly 10 milliliters of hydrochloric acid in it. And the hydrochloric acid concentration was the unknown. We had no idea what that concentration was. So our job was to add a certain amount of base uh, or sodium hydroxide until that solution turned just pink. And I'm going to use pink for uh, red for pink here. But as it did that, we knew that we had reached a point called the neutralization point. And the neutralization point, if we remember from our notes, means that when uh, a substance is neutral or neutralized in terms of uh, chemistry, that means that the moles of base, or OH minus, is equal to the number of moles of H3O plus that's in the solution. This gives us a pH of 7 when we're using a strong base and a strong acid like we were on Friday. So this was the question. How are we able to go ahead uh, and predict the concentration of HCl from this? Well, we first had to figure out how much sodium hydroxide we had added. So let's go ahead and take one of our trials. I'm going to take a random trial and say, uh, I'm going to call it trial number one. Let's say for trial one, <clears throat> we used uh, approximately 6.9 milliliters of NaOH. This was our uh, amount that we used. So from the concentration and from the volume, we should be able to calculate the number of moles that were used in, uh, to neutralize the reaction. Again, once we know the moles of base used, we can figure out the moles of H3O plus that were neutralized in our reaction. So let's try that. Uh, in, te in terms of milliliters, let's go ahead and make that into liters. Let's go 0 0.0069 liters. If we remember that concentration or molarity is equal to the number of moles of a substance divided by the liters, we can go ahead and kind of set up an equation to solve this. Let's do that. 0 0.15 molar NaOH is equal to X number of moles divided by 0 0.0069 liters. How many moles is that? I'm going to give you a second to get your calculator out and punch that in, but I'm going to go ahead and grab my calculator as well, and I'll punch it in too, just so we can be on the same page. 0, 0, 6, 9 times 0.15 is, I get, whoa, I get a small number. That's okay, I expect that, but it's pretty small. How many moles was it? It was 0 0.001035 moles. Or we can call that in scientific notation, for those of us that prefer scientific notation, 1.035 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. Uh, I'm sorry, that's moles, number of moles. So that's how many moles of H3O plus we had as well. I'm going to go ahead up here and kind of write that right here. 1.035 times 10 to the negative 3 moles. That's how many moles we had. Now, we look back and say, okay, with trial number one, how many milliliters? I'm going to say 10, and it wasn't always 10. Sometimes it was 9.8, sometimes it was 9.6. It's whatever uh, your lab leader showed you in the class. But for us, let's say it was 10 milliliters. So now I got 10 milliliters. I know how many moles I had. I can go ahead and use that same molarity formula to calculate the amount of HCl, the concentration of HCl. So the unknown concentration is going to be equal to the number of moles, 1.035 times 10 to the negative 3, divided by the number of liters. And again, 10 milliliters is not liters, so let's do that conversion real quick. 0 0.010 liters. So I'm just going to divide by basically uh, 1 100th. And when I do that, 
I find that my concentration is roughly uh, 0.1035 molar HCl. That's just trial number one. Go ahead and do that for your three trials, take an average, and come up with the best guess. What is your best guess for the concentration of HCl after we went ahead and did this titration? This is how we can use a strong acid and strong base to identify the concentration of an unknown substance. This process is called titration. That's the first part. The next part I want to talk about is modeling this reaction. Like What happens slowly as this process takes place? Well, there are three different steps, right? At first, we have just our acid in our Erlenmeyer flask, and we haven't really added any uh, sodium hydroxide yet. We just have a little bit going on. Okay, so we're going to model that. We're also going to model a, uh, a point at which we've used some of our NaOH in our Erlenmeyer flask, but we haven't reached a neutralization point yet. So we're still here. We've our, increased our volume, and maybe we're starting to see a little bit of pink show up, but as we swirl it, it goes away. And then we're going to model one third and final part of our titration, and that's when we've used quite a bit of base. And we've now turned our Erlenmeyer flask, or the solution in our Erlenmeyer flask, see I've got a little bit more, uh, we've turned it that pink color. right? This is our pH indicator telling us that we already have, or we've reached our equivalence point, or we've reached our neutralization point. So let's go ahead and set up a key first. So um, in our key, I'm just going to use actually, um, instead of particles, I'm going to use, uh, no, I'll go ahead and use particles. So we'll go an open circle. We'll call that our um, oxygens. We'll go ahead and call a square our hydrogens. And that's pretty much all we're going to have here. Uh, we can go ahead and say triangle is going to be our sodium. And we can say that a, uh, a star is going to be our, our chlorine. Okay. So to begin with, in our Erlenmeyer flask. That's all we're going to model is what's in the flask. So to begin with, in the flask, what we have is a bunch of H3O pluses. So we're going to have three H's on each of these. H3O plus. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make four of them. And if we have four H3O pluses, the H3O plus was formed by HCl that was in there. So for every additional H beyond water, we need to have one additional chlorine. So I'm gonna have four chloride ions in there as well. So four stars, because there are just these chlorine ions floating around. After we've added some NaOH, we've got something else happening here, right? Because the neutralization process is happening, that acid is starting to react to form water. The base is hitting the acid, it's neutralizing, and it's taking the H3O plus and turning it into H2O. So halfway through, half of my uh, acid molecules have actually turned into water, okay? So how many is that? Well, uh, I'm going to need one OH to form this. For every OH that hits an H3O plus, I get two waters out. So I'm actually going to see four waters with two H3O pluses still floating around. So there's, my, there's one H2O. Here's another one. That's one molecule of H3O plus that's been neutralized by an OH. Here's another one. This is a second molecule of hydronium or H3O plus that has been neutralized. Again, I'm not quite at the neutralization or equivalence point yet, so I still have a few H3O pluses floating around in solution. Now, the chloride ions didn't really do a whole lot. We called them spectator ions. They're still floating around doing their business, not really reacting with anybody. And then the sodium ions that came in with NaOH are also going to be present now. So I dropped in uh, two OH minuses, so I'm going to see two uh, NAs. How do I know I dropped in two? Again, I have two hydroniums that became the four water molecules. Those two reacted, so how did I get two OHs? Well, I needed two NaOHs. So NaOH brings in one Na for every single molecule that is dropped in. Finally, at equivalence point, this means at equivalence point, I had better not see any more hydronium ions. All those ions have been neutralized, they formed water. So I'm going to have my initial four from the previous model one, two, three, four. And I should see four more because the other hydronium ions have gone ahead 
and then neutralized as well. So now I've got four, I've got eight water molecules, sorry, eight water molecules that are officially like neutral, pH of seven. I'm also gonna have those initial four uh, chloride ions floating around. My spectator ion is not doing a whole lot. And now I'm gonna have two more sodium ions floating around in that solution, okay? We can take this one step further and say, Mr. Gustin, what would happen if I actually added too much OH, too much uh, sodium hydroxide? So let's say I have even one more, right? Even one more where now I've used a heck of a lot of sodium hydroxide, way beyond what I should be using, right? It's not just pink. Now we're talking, it's like this bright, bright, bright pink. What's happening now? What's actually happening now is as you add more OH to the solution, you're gonna no longer see the water molecules floating around. Um, or I'm sorry, you're still gonna see the water molecules floating around. I gotta draw eight of those. But now I've added too much base. And by adding too much base, I've brought the pH above seven. I've got five right now, six, seven, and eight water molecules. They're still there. But now I have these additional OH ions floating around. Okay, and along with all these ions, all these ions should be there as well. So one, two, three, four chlorines. One, two, three, four sodiums. But I have these additional hydroxides that I've added from the B-Rep. So I need to actually probably have two more sodiums floating around. This pH, if this pH is around one, this pH is around uh, like let's say two, because it's still acidic when I see it, it's still pretty acidic. Over here, this pH is right at seven. This pH is somewhere greater than seven because I see those OH ions floating around in solution. So these are the two big takeaways, right? Can we model the titration experiment as we go through step by step? And can we use the titration data to actually calculate the unknown concentration of hydronium or the unknown concentration of the strong acid? In this case, it's HCl. So this is enough information, I think, that you need to go ahead and finish up your lab. But make it specific to your lab. Don't just rip off my data. Use your data. Do it for three trials. Calculate the unknown. And then take an average to figure out what you think the actual unknown concentration of the acid is. I'll make sure I tell you on Tuesday when I see you all. But, in before, uh, but before then... Finish this up, and I've got some practice on Canvas for you that I'm posting as well for you to work on uh, once you finish up this lab. All right? See ya!